Why did the Soviet Union build titanium submarines and why hasn't the U.S. Navy followed suit? Three short answers, performance, cost, and industrial choices. During the Cold War, Moscow pushed titanium hulls because titanium offers an exceptional strength to weight ratio, excellent corrosion resistance, and a low magnetic signature, traits that let boats dive deeper, move faster, and reduce certain detection risks. Soviet designs like the Alpha and Lyra family and the titanium-hulled K-278 Komsomolets proved those advantages in practice, reaching depths Western boats could not. Countdown. But titanium Five, isn't six, a magic seven, bullet. Eight. It's expensive. Raw material prices and the specialized fabrication needed make titanium hulls far costlier than steel. Welding titanium safely requires inert gas environments, unique tooling, and highly trained workers. Repairs and routine maintenance demand facilities that most shipyards don't have. That industrial and logistical burden was a cost the Soviet Union was willing to pay for operational advantages. The United States, by contrast, prioritized production scale, sustainment, and modular repairability in peacetime yards. There are also safety and life cycle questions. Experimental Russian titanium subs achieved impressive performance but suffered serious incidents, most famously the Komsomolets' tragic 1989 sinking highlighting the risks of pioneering exotic materials without mature support chains. For the US, the calculus favored proven high-strength steels, established supply chains, and incremental innovations in hull form and quieting instead of a wholesale leap to titanium. So the reality is strategic and economic, not just technical. Russia invested in titanium to meet specific doctrinal goals, deep diving, speed, and stealth trade-offs, and accepted higher costs and risks to achieve them. The U.S. Navy chose a different path, one optimized for large-scale production, maintainability, and integration with allied logistics. Each choice reflects different priorities and industrial capabilities and explains why titanium subs remain a Russian specialty rather than a global standard.